convened the Sanitary District 2 meeting. Where? What that agenda? Hey. Thank you. Very much. No worries. So we're calling to order the Tuesday, August 20th meeting of the Sanitary District Number 2 Board of Directors. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Board Member Casisa. Here. Board Member Lee. Here. Board Member Thomas. Here. Vice President Ravazio. Here. President Beckman. Here. Thank you. We'll have open time for public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to comment on any items not on tonight's agenda. If you're with us and you'd like to make public comment for open time, please come to our podium. If you're on Zoom and you'd like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. Not seeing anybody present in the chambers wishing to make public comment. Do we have any hands up on Zoom or emails in? Um, we don't have any emails or hands raised. Okay, thank you. So we'll close open time. We move on to our consent calendar. These are items that are routine or have been previously discussed and do not require further discussion. Any member of the board or public may pull a consent calendar item for discussion. Would any board members like to pull our one consent calendar item for discussion? Seeing none, if any members of the public would like to pull our one consent calendar item from discussion, please go on up to our podium here or raise your hand via Zoom. Not seeing any movement in the chamber. Do we have any hands up on Zoom? None on Zoom, no email. Public. All right, we will bring the SD2 consent calendar back to the board for a motion. I'll make a motion to move the consent calendar. I'll second. Okay, board member Casisa. Yes. Board member Lee. Yes. Board member Thomas. Yes. Vice President Ravazio. Yes. President Beckman. Yes. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have no public hearings tonight. Our only business item is 6A, which is consideration and possible adoption of resolution number 09 2024, authorizing the issuance of bonds in the amount of $11 million. And I'm going to turn it over to staff. Thank you, Board President Beckman and members of the board. Um, so we have um, myself, Ardu Suko, District Manager, uh, our Finance Director, Daria Creo, and uh, with us virtually, we have Leslie Bloom from NHA Advisors to assist with this, and also Chris Lynch. Um, so this item is really um, a, con you know, in some ways a continuation of the work we've been doing over the last, um, you know, almost, you know, ten months really to go through the master plan process, identify our capital improvement budget needs. Um, which then identified a need for bonds to fund these investments. And this is kind of the initial phase of starting that process. And so um, we have a short presentation. And um, so most recently uh, we discussed the sanitary sewer master plan with you all in the spring of 24, um, which was approved. Um, that identified a 10 year capital improvement budget over the, uh, for uh, a cost estimated at $97.78 million. Um, a sewer rate study was completed in July 1 to really uh, understand how um, we could fund those uh, much needed investments. And it also identified a first series of bond financing of about $10 million. Next slide, please. So as part of the sewer master plan, um, it was a really a deep dive at our existing conditions of our infrastructure. So it looked at 44 miles of um, pipeline uh, video recording, uh, did a uh, de de detailed desktop and field assessment of 19 pump stations, and also reviewed other um, assets in our force mains and other um, valve networks and appurtenances. Um, I know it's a little hard to see on this. Um, perhaps we can blow it up a little bit, but um, this is really a visual summary of, of all the projects that um, we'd like to prioritize as part of our 10 year CIP. Um, you know, the large cyan um, line there is, is really a, um, a redundant uh, force main that would go from our Paradise Pump Station to the south um, side of Puerto Madera Creek. And then we also have um, our Paradise Pump Station there at the south end of that line. Um, those are both um, upwards of I believe you know one's nine million dollars and one's eleven and a half. So these are big investments um, for the district. Gotcha. Um, we also have our kind of typical work where we go and rehab our gravity sewer pump pumps or gravity sewer pipes and our pump stations. Um, but it's all been prioritized, cataloged, and um, brought to you for um, approval prior. Next slide, please. Here's kind of a breakdown or summary of what um, those visual, you know, symbols and icons mean, but in a tabular form. So, you know, 
we have a, a, a identified cost for improvements on the gravity line. So that's your, you know, just your pipelines that um, flow by gravity. Um, we have also, you know, maintenance and operation costs, you know, including staff time. We've got our private sewer ladder ordinance. Um, again, we've mentioned the, you know, um, pump station improvements and other um, vertical asset improvements. So it's all really um, tabulated for um, us to dive into um, in detail as needed um, throughout the process, but it's all accounted for in that $97.8 million over 10 years. Next slide, please. So you probably recall, um, these were some of the discussions we were having um, in, I wanna say, um, January, March of this year, really trying to find how best to finance these improvements. And, you know, in, in, in a special workshop with council through discussions with the finance committee, um, through multiple, multiple, you know, several iterations of kind of playing with the numbers. Um, this is what was brought to um, the board for um, adoption, which was um, a 40% increase in fiscal year 25, followed by 30%, 20%, and then softening out at eight and 5%. But it did also, um, to reduce the what, what um, Leslie and others in our in our finance group will discuss the pay as you go um, option. This kind of was a hybrid approach to finance a portion of the money needed to fund these um, improvements and also raise fees to fund the other portion. So, um, next slide, please. We wanted to be um, <clears throat> uh, conscious of. You know, not just what our ratepayers are paying now, um, and also project out. You know what these increases would mean um, moving forward for them, but also look at where we stack up in terms of the costs for this level, this type of service, um, sanitary service across um, the other agencies here, in Marin. So, you know, prior to that um, <clears throat> increase, we were, you know, basically at the lowest, and even with the increase, we are still. I'm on the lowest there in the third column to the left at um, 6.99 in fiscal year 25. Next slide. And so with that, I'm going to pass it off to Leslie Bloom at NH Advisors to discuss the financing terms in more detail. Uh, thanks, RJ. Uh, good evening, uh, President and members of the board. My name is Leslie Bloom um, with NH Advisors. We are the municipal advisor to the district. Um, I will uh, briefly touch on the financing details and then uh, turn it over to Chris uh, Lynch with Jones Hall, who is serving as your bond and disclosure counsel for this financing. Uh, in accordance with the recent rate study, the district plans to generate uh, about 10 million um, for planned projects through financing. Uh, we anticipate that this financing will be completed through a competitive sale to investors in the public market. The financing will have a 30-year term maturing September 1st, 2054. Annual debt service payments are estimated to be approximately 605000 based on current market rates. And over the life of the financing, total principal and interest payments are estimated to be about 18.3 million um, if there are no prepayments or refinancings before um, the term of the loan. Uh, as part of the financing, the district will be required to maintain debt service coverage of no less than um, 110 times. And, and what this means is that net revenues of the district must be uh, 110% of annual debt service. So at the bottom of the slide, um, we show projected debt service coverage on the 2024 obligations. Uh, and, and based on projected net revenues that incorporate the rate adjustments that RJ just talked about um, through fiscal year 2029, um, debt service coverage is well above that 110 times. Uh, and it's anticipated to be um, you know, very strong even when the district contemplates a future financing um, that was contemplated in the district's rate study. Um, this next slide sets forth the estimated sources and uses of the financing. Um, as we mentioned on the prior slide, the district plans to generate 10 million in proceeds for planned projects 
uh, in the current market, we estimate some premium being generated, which happens when um, an investor pays a price a uh, purchase price that um, is greater than the face value of the certificate in this case. Um, so this creates the total principal amount being um, nine, you know, 0.35 million, even though you're generating 10 million in proceeds. So the principal plus the premium is sufficient to um, provide for the 10 million in, in projects plus um, estimated financing costs. And the financing costs um, include legal counsel, municipal advisor, underwriting, um, rating, trustee, counterparty fees, et cetera. Um, and as RJ mentioned, projects that are expected to be funded with the 10 million include the Paradise Pump Station um, construction, Corte Madera Creek um, meter vault, 24, um, the 24 inch Paradise Forest Main and the Madera Gardens uh, sewer project. And with that, I will turn it over to Chris Lynch, who is a partner with Jones Hall to discuss the uh, resolution and documents in front of the board this evening. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, I'm aware of the short amount of time available, so I will just hit the highlights. Staff is recommending that the board adopt the proposed resolution, and that resolution would do a number of things. First, it will authorize the issuance and sale of the 2024 certificates of participation, as Leslie described them. For those not familiar with certificates of participation or COPs, they're a type of security that securitizes a stream of payments that is then sold to investors instead of bonds. In this case, the COPs will securitize semi-annual payments made by the Sanitary District from its Wastewater Enterprise Fund, which, as you know, includes annual service charges paid by town residents and businesses, and then also some property tax revenues. Uh, second, the resolution will declare the Sanitary District's intention to reimburse capital expenditures on those elements of the capital improvement plan that are being financed. And that's a federal tax law requirement. In the case that sanitary district wants to reimburse itself, it simply preserves rights under federal tax law. Third, the resolution will make findings as to the exemption of the financing from CEQA or the California Environmental Quality Act review. Um, fourth, fourth, I wanna focus on this part. The resolution will adopt written disclosure policies and procedures. The Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC, which regulates issuers of municipal bonds, recommends that issuers adopt written disclosure policies and procedures. And the town did that in 2014. By this resolution, the sanitary district is adopting the town's policy. The key features of that policy for your pur purposes are the following. First, the town's finance director will be responsible for monitoring compliance with securities laws as part of initial and continuing disclosure. And staff will educate the board about its responsibilities under federal securities laws when it approves the disclosure document. So with that in mind, the staff report for the COPs highlights those responsibilities of the, of the elected officials uh, who act on the board uh, for the district on page three. But in short, the members of the board are responsible for ensuring that any fact of which they're aware that would reflect on the sanitary district's ability to repay the proposed COPs are adequately disclosed to investors in the official statement, or which is what we call a prospectus in the municipal bond world. The type of issues that should be disclosed include factors that could increase wastewater system operating expenses or decrease wastewater system revenues. Staff has worked with uh, NHA, its municipal advisor, and us as Bond and Disclosure Council to disclose the material facts of which they're aware. And the two key sections in the official statement that you're looking at tonight are the, uh, called the district and the wastewater system, and then the section entitled risk factors. The fifth thing being done by this resolution is it will approve related and documents related documents and actions. So the slide before you describes the documents in detail. So given the time, I'll only focus on two key documents. The first is the installment sale agreement. That's the agreement by which the district will make payments that will be securitized by the COPs. And it includes that key financial covenant, the rate uh, covenant that Leslie described on her uh, previously. And then the second document I just wanna mention is the preliminary official statement. Um, as I mentioned, the official statement is a prospectus and it's circulated to potential investors and it should include all facts that uh, our reasonable investor would take into consideration when making the decision to buy or sell the COPs. And this version of, is called a preliminary official statement because it includes all material facts except the terms to be determined at pricing, which include principal amount, interest rate, and maturity date. So I'm happy to answer any questions, but I didn't want to go on, on further detail. 
Thank you very much. Does that conclude the presentation or is there more to add? Uh, I can just wrap it up with this last slide, um, which is next up. So we're about, um, you know, a few months into the financing process. And, um, you know, from here, we expect to have um, the rating results in the next couple of weeks. At that point, we can finalize the um, offering document, the preliminary official statement that Chris just talked about, and release it to investors. Um, and then it's in the market for a short period of time. Pricing then is expected to occur <clears throat> Um, in or around mid-September with closing and delivery of funds to the district, uh, you know, about two weeks later or early October. And with that, that's the conclusion of the presentation. So I will stop sharing. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. All right. So we'll open it up to the board for questions here. We'll start down here. Yeah, just real quick. I thought I read in the staff report somewhere there's a ceiling of five and a half percent. Uh, yes, that's correct. So the uh, resolution authorizes a not to exceed principal amount of 11 million. Right now you're at about 9 million, but, um, you know, because of that, uh, the pricing, you know, it, we want to generate at least 10 million in proceeds plus cost of issuance. So we have not to exceed of 10 million par and a not to exceed interest rate of 5.5%. Okay, thanks. And then once those uh, bonds are sold, the whole 11 million would just be wired into the town, correct? So, um, yep, so the target is 10 million in proceeds. The 11 just gives you some flexibility at pricing, but the 10 million proceeds will be wired to the um, to the town at closing. That's correct, to the district. One last question. I think you mentioned the town had a policy a, a policy from 2014 that we're just, we'll basically adopt that policy. Is that policy outdated given that's 10 years ago? 10 years ago, does it need to be updated at all before we adopt it? So this is Chris Lynch. Uh, the answer is I don't believe it's outdated. It establishes a pretty basic process by which the, the town's officials will review uh, and approve documents for disclosure in, into the public marketplace, either initial disclosure like we're talking about tonight or continuing disclosure on an annual basis or when certain significant events rise. Um, and so I think that policy is still uh, appropriate today. And that's why we're having the town, uh, sorry, the sanitary district adopt it as its own. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Since I'm not a financial question, I'll just ask Daria, are you comfortable with this? Does this all look good to you? Um, yes, I've worked, I've been working with NHA and with Jones Hall on this um, and we'll be having the rating call uh, tomorrow with them. Yes, yeah, so we've worked very closely with them on this, yes. Okay. Any questions? No questions. All right. Um, I'm just curious, does the sanitary district and the town, do they have different credit ratings? That's a great question. Yes. So the town um, is rated, there's an issue of credit rating for the town, which is a triple A. And then, um, you know, depending on the type of security of a transaction, there is a rating for that particular obligation. Um, for the district, you have not been through a rating process, so it it will be different than the towns. And the um, the focus is, um, you know, the the district's enterprise and the financials of the district. So, um, so yes, different than the town. Do we have a sense of where, unless it's not wise to say this in a public meeting, do we have a sense of where we expect to fall? Um, so, I, yeah. Yep, I would expect you to be a high. The town is AAA. Um, you know, there are 10, um, 10 um, investment grade ratings, and I would expect you to be on the high end of that. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? One more question of, um, about that is the rating that they come back with, will that have any effect on, you know, will that keep the percentage, the uh, rate the same or, you know, do you know? Uh, so the rate that we're talking about here tonight, um, the rate that we are using in the numbers is um, a market estimate based on where we believe that your rating will be. Um, you know, we, um, it, when we actually go to market, um, you know, it will be dependent, the rate that you receive will be dependent on the market at that time. So, um, you know, we expect it to be around, hopefully better than what we're showing you tonight. But I think right now it's a good estimate of, of where you'll be. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I do have a question about interest rates. Um, so, right, we're talking about the, with the COPs, are the interest rates, uh, will the Fed uh, kind of, 
basis points have any kind of effect on the market in the next couple months that we would see a change that would uh, be better off for the SD2 uh, putting it out there? Just um, So the tax exempt market is pri priced off of a benchmark called municipal market data. Um, and so the Fed, you know, impacts treasuries, but they do, um, they do work together as far as, you know, one of uh, the, the, um, you know, tax or the treasury market impacting the municipal market. Um, you know, we don't know for sure where rates will go. We have seen them come down in recent weeks, um, you know, even down a bit since we prepared these numbers. Um, so I think we're headed in the right direction. Um, but, you know, again, any economic data could turn rates the other way. So it's hard hard to know for sure which way it'll go. And the when do the rates get set on your timeline? Is that September, October? Uh, right now we are expecting oh, I don't have it, I don't have it up. Um we are expecting to uh price about mid September. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You know, if I may, just uh, just on, from a timing standpoint, if you'll recall, some of the projects we've already started funding through the existing funds that the Sanitary District 2 has, Madera Gardens, and I think the other station project, in anticipation that you know, we continue this plan that we've outlined over the last 10 months of actually getting additional proceeds in so that we those projects can continue apace and get completed. Uh, obviously, the earlier, the better, which will save us money. Uh, from having to postpone those and make higher costs down the road. So. And, and if I can follow up on, um, you know, Council Member Lee's or Board Member Lee's line of questioning. Um, so I think what I think maybe he was getting at, or at least I'll, I'll get at, is um, the rate isn't directly tied to, you know, the current Fed rate. It's more just built into the, baked into the equation that these people might give as their possible interest rate. So it's not like when you say get a loan at a bank where it's tied to the prime rate. And if we wait a couple more weeks, we get a slightly better prime rate. I think what you're saying is it's just another source of data for the people to consider as they approach um, bidding, so to speak. That Thanks. Thanks for entering into that line of discourse. I mean, it really is like, if is there still an opportunity to push it a month or right. two? Because, you know, it's going to drop to the point that it's 17 million, say 18 million on the full, full debt service, right? The answer I'm hearing is we need to proceed because we've committed, right? And the other one is, is it's not quite that same one where we know that the Fed's going to do that. And we don't have that kind of synergy that we could kind of predict. It sounds like you know, it's it's more set on the rate and the quality of the of people interested in, in engaging with the COP buyout, right? So, yeah, and thanks I, for helping me. Less than me, you can that. confirm it. So I think what I'm getting at is the people that might be interested in going after this bond package are going to bake whatever is going on in the market into that at the time. And if that means rates are trending down, it's, we're going to kind of see some of that baked in. Is that mm -hmm. fair to say? Yeah, so, um, so you know, the, the markets are, you know, they change per the Fed rates and, you know, we can see interest rates come down, um, you know, when the Fed, um, um, you know, when even though even though tax exempt financings are not tied directly to the Fed rate, um, we do see it impact the tax exempt market. Um, we do see, you know, any sort of um, market news, global market news also impact the market. So, you know, we're always hesitant to say, you know, wait because something could happen tomorrow that could, you know, change change rates, um, you know, in the opposite direction. Um, you know, however, they have been trending down downwards, which is great. Um, you know, we hope to continue continue to see them go downwards. Um, but you know, given the timing, it's you know really up to the district if they would prefer to, um, you know, execute on the transaction now or, or wait a little bit longer. So that that's the other question is we can authorize them to go through this process, but you guys have the ability to fix the final timeline or are we approving that entire schedule, right? Yeah, I don't we haven't set a date, correct? Correct. Yeah. The the timeline is flexible. So we're just putting, you know, the steps going forward. What are the general steps between now and closing? Um, you know, there's flexibility on when it is that we actually price uh, you know, as 
was mentioned earlier, we have a call tomorrow with the rating agency. So the rating will be um, released, you know, potentially in a couple of weeks after the discussion with them. Um, and that rating is good for a period of time. Once they complete that rating, I believe it's up to 90 days. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's um, the rating is with the, I should clarify, the rating is with the financing forever, but, you know, when they do their analysis to when you um, price and close the financing is generally about 90 days, I believe is what it's good for. I think it's the age old story, you can't time the market. Daria, when that money comes in, where are we parking the money and what kind of rate are we getting on that money? Because it seems like there's going to be a little bit of arbitrage for a period of time till that money actually goes out. I, I believe um, if it's handled the same way as the town's uh, certificates of participation were, that um, the trustee, Bank of New York Mellon, holds those funds, um, and then the town asks for reimbursement of those of those um, funds. And I believe that the, the rate last time was about, I mean, it varied because we were holding them, you know, for a while. Um, but I think it it was usually um, at, at the latest time was, was close to 5%. Okay. So there's a little bit of margin there, at least for a short period of time. Do we need the funds? All right. Thanks. Any other questions from board members? All right, we'll open this up for public comment. Any members of the public who'd like to comment on this item, come on up to our podium. If you're with us in person, please raise your hand if you're with us via Zoom. Not seeing anyone come up to our podium here in person. Do we have any hands up or emails in? No hands up or emails for this item. Okay, thank you. We'll close public comment and bring this back to the board for discussion and a possible motion. Um, any thoughts down here? Cool, let's do it. Um, I'll just add one thought that came up as we were talking about timing, although Fred is certainly right, you can't time the market. Um, but I'm, I'm cognizant that when the town went out for our uh, to bond our pension liability, um, we went through like months, you know, nine or 12 months beforehand of very intentionally setting ourselves up for that AAA credit rating, um, you know, just kind of doing a bunch of sort of financial reform policies, things like that. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I think a lot of those applied to SD2 as well, um, but I just wanted to maybe put the thought out there. And you guys, I'm going to leave the timing to you because you know when you need the money on a project basis. Um, but if there ends up being some downtime between, you know, approving tonight and when we end up needing, you know, going ahead and pricing these, for example, and you guys see opportunities to bring SD2 items that might help us, um, you know, if we want to get our credit rating reassessed, might be might be strategic. So. I'll put that out there. Um, any other comments from board members? No? Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll move that we approve. Uh, I was, oh, sorry. It's okay. You go go ahead. I was. I, I wanted to really just acknowledge uh, it's been a lot of- uh, You're right. Public Works SD, We're right. SD2 projects uh, this evening and just there's a lot going on, obviously, um, and just acknowledge the hard work of RJ, not only on this, but also on Casa Buena and the Storm Dream Master Plan, the town, you know, so- in any case, thank, thanks, RJ and, and Daria and, and our consultants for their work on this as well. Sure. Thank you to the team. We, we know this was a big undertaking. And with that, if anyone would like to make a motion on resolution number 09-2024, they're welcome to. All right, I'll go ahead and make the uh, motion to adopt resolution number 09-2024, authorizing the issuance and sale of wastewater revenue certificates of participation series 2024 in the principal amount, not to save 11 million, to provide financing for wastewater system improvements, two, declaring intention to reimburse expenditures, and three, authorizing SD2 district manager, town manager, or town finance director to enter into professional service agreements with Jones Hall, the Professional Law Corporation, Bond Council, in an amount not to exceed 91,000 and NHA advisors, LLC municipal advisor, in an amount not to exceed 72,500, four, finding that the proposed action is not subject to a CEQA, and five, adopting disclosure policies and procedures and approving related documents and actions. Second. Okay. Board member Casisa? Yes. Board member Lee? C. Board member Thomas? Yes. Vice President Ravazio? Yes. President Beckman? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you. Do we have a district manager report? No. Thank Great you. news. Do we have any board member reports? Great news. Do we have any comments on our draft agenda for the next meeting? No. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.